As much as I love film, I adore music, especially the music of the 1960s. Not Fade Away is directed by David Chase, and David Chase is most known for creating, in my opinion, one of the greatest TV shows ever to be on TV, and also helped me to get excited about television again, because before that, I, I, I barely watched any television, I barely got into any shows. The Sopranos, which he created, showed that television can tell as engaging stories, give us great characters, and maybe even do it much better. Because film, we only have like a couple hours to tell a story, and it is a challenge to get all that in. Where television, you can, if you have the chance, you can tell it for years and years and years. And that was so great about The Sopranos. And I've had the chance to watch the show a couple times now, and uh, every episode is brilliant, even up to that really shocking ending. And uh, I was, I know it's been, I've been really wondering what's going on with David Chase and what he's going to be doing with his career. He has a new film, Not Fade Away, which tells about music, uh, creating music, and and finding yourself in the 1960s, especially right after Kennedy was killed, the war is going on, the Vietnam War is happening. This film was very, very interesting, and I liked the way it felt. It didn't. It did feel slightly like a Sopranos episode, and what I mean by that is, in the Sopranos, we never got a score. We never got music in the background to tell us how to feel. To, to tell us what's going to be happening next. So there is that element of surprise. And yes, there's a lot of great source music in this film that does contribute to the actual movie. Yeah, I just like this this, this look and this feel that this movie... It, it, you definitely felt like you were in the 1960s. But this movie is not told like regular movie movies, movies about... Uh, the creation of music. It's, it's, it's very odd in that way that it jumps around a lot. Now, it doesn't go back and forth, but we learn about the characters, and then it jumps maybe a year later, and we learn more about the characters, and then it jumps a few months later, and we learn more about the characters. So, some might feel a little bit lost or a little bit shaken up. I can agree with them on some level, because watching this movie, all I could help but think about, this would be an amazing TV show on Showtime or HBO. The, just to give it room and... and uh, a place to breathe and grow and you get to see all these characters and see how they develop. This movie is two hours but there is a lot of information in those two hours and that can be a good thing and a bad thing. It is good because I like these characters. James Gandolfini plays the father of this kid and I don't really know all the names. A lot of these people are unknowns and I don't know where I've seen them before. I did recognize the girl. She was played, she, she, was, she was in the film Dark Shadows last year, Tim Burton's Dark Shadows, so I did recognize her but I didn't rec recognize a lot of the other people other than James Gandolfini. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna have to check that out but I think I saw Lisa Lampanelli in a very small part as one of the relatives. But this film, you know, it just was so strange and weird. I think that was good on that level. That was really good. It definitely helped to get you into the story, but it might be bad because, you know, you you cram so much into this movie. I, I think it's overflowing with material that could fill years and years and years of great television. That's my only real complaint about the movie. It's it's not a perfect film. It is a film that is is very entertaining and very insightful about you know these people these guys have a dream they want to they look at their they look at their idols like the Beatles and the Stones and and other great music and they want to be there and who knows if they're gonna make it or not this movie definitely leaves it up in the air and I think people will be talking about this movie especially like the last few minutes of the film like where does it go what happens to the characters but I, I enjoyed this experience this movie is very different and I know it's it's a 2012 movie and I saw it in 2013. And I hope that David Chase doesn't wait too long to make his next movie. I wish this was a series. I wish we could actually watch this every week, not fade away the series. Because I think his characters deserve that. But um, whatever. That's what we got. I think we got a really great film. Not a perfect film, but a really great film. And I'm going to give Not Fade Away three and a half stars. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. And please go to WeLiveFilm.com and subscribe right here on YouTube to we Live Film, And also go to WhoYouTube.com. If you've seen, now this film is not getting a wide release, so if you've seen this film, please comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say and, and your opinion about this movie. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it's great? Did you think it's not? What do you think about the ending? How do you feel where it went? And thank you very much. Bye.
Man, I really think that was Lisa Lampanelli. I'm going to have to go check that out.